I'm Claudine Wong, joining you from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm joined now by Priscilla Shu, who is a professor of medicine at UCSF. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So there are so many things that uh, we are looking to science and medicine to help us through this coronavirus pandemic. And, and obviously the vaccine and treatments and anything that we can do to help mitigate. Tell me about this, this trial that you guys are using, because a lot of, uh, you know, I think doctors and, and people are looking to current medicines that are out there to see if they can do anything to really help impact this. Yes. So thanks, Claudine. Absolutely. So this is a trial called the Col Corona trial, and it is looking at the impact of colchicine, which is a commonly used medication for gout, um, and the impact of this medication when taken very early in diagnosis. And I was really drawn to this trial because, as opposed to lots of the other studies that you're reading out there, this is looking at non-hospitalized individuals, and it has a very unique study design in that um, there's no direct subject contact. Individuals are consented over the telephone and the study medication gets shipped to them directly. So they don't need to make repeated trips to the hospital for monitoring. What also makes this possible is that the medication is uh, relatively inexpensive and there's a strong safety profile that's already known about this medication. So it doesn't require lots of lab visits or other type of monitoring that um, additional medication would require. So that takes us through a bunch of steps and we know it's already safe that, it, that people are using it in, in widespread use. Tell me about why you think this, this might be impactful to you know, COVID-19. And, and I think it comes to, you know, what surprises so many people is how quickly people you know, can get extremely sick from having a cough one day and a fever to all of a sudden they're in the hospital and they're suffering some very serious problems with their other organs. We've seen the recent news about all the strokes and the yes. damage it does to your heart and your other organs. And, and that's the part where I think people are trying to wrap their, their heads around from this, this jump from, okay, I don't feel well to now I'm on a, on a ventilator and there's so many other problems going. I think that's what this, this trial is, is interesting because it tries to address. Right. So I think uh, there's two answers to your question. So the first thing is that our hope is this medication, which lowers inflammation, can reduce this uh, cytokine release syndrome or cytokine storm, which is what you were referring to. The critically ill patients in the hospital, they, once they're infected with the virus, their immune system and inflammation gets revved up and they become critically ill with end organ uh, disease. So our hope is that by lowering inflammation, early on the disease process, and that is right after you know, individuals are notified of their positive um, status, that we can prevent that cytokine release syndrome from happening. A second point to this is that we know that in the general population, so outside of COVID, that this medication, when taken right after a heart attack, significantly reduces the risk of future, future heart attacks and strokes. And so it is interesting that in this setting, uh, because we are focusing on individuals aged 40 and over with COVID, and also who have one traditional cardiovascular risk factor, so they have high blood pressure, diabetes, or hyperlipidemia, um, that colchicine in this setting may not only have a beneficial impact on clinical progression of COVID, but also an impact on reduction of cardiovascular disease. And that's something that additional studies will need to focus on. And it seems like, from a layperson's point of view, that this is a great fit. I mean, we have heard from the very, the very beginning that if you have diabetes or you have high blood pressure, those kinds of things, those are mitigating factors that should make you more concerned or make your doctor more concerned if you have any of these other symptoms so you get tested more, more quickly. Right. And then I think, you know, there is lots of data that show that, you know, not surprisingly, older individuals, individuals who have these comorbidities, they do worse in the setting of COVID-19. So certainly it's our hope that intervening with this oral medication early on um, will help with COVID, but also potentially hope, help with their clinic, with their cardiovascular complications. So, you know, in terms of how this, this would play out in, term, in determining how effective this is and that this is it making an impact, you'd first have to identify all these folks. And you talk about contact lists, they'd have to sign up and say, you know, I mean, how much time is the window from saying, okay, I got a positive test because testing obviously is an issue still across the country to getting them the medication to putting them in the study. I mean, I think you're looking for what, 6,000 people or so to participate. 
Right. So this is a large uh, outcome-driven clinical trial. Um, the United States is one of the sites, but it's also being mainly run out of Canada with sites in Europe. Um, here at UCSF, we are in charge of enrolling for all of California. So what happens is there is a pretty tight window, as you alluded to. So within 48 hours of a patient being notified of their positive status, um, they will get randomized into the study and medication will be shipped to them quickly. And so that is the, the one way we've been able to, to try to get the medication out quickly to individuals here in California. Um, there is a, there's other sites in New York City, Philadelphia, and they're looking for other sites in the country as well. And so the idea is, it's kind of, uh, you know, and obviously this is not a vaccine, but certainly when people get the vaccine for the flu, they say, okay, you, it may not prevent you from getting the flu, but it'll be, it'll be less. It'll be something that isn't, you know, as impactful maybe, hopefully, if you get it. So is the idea with this medication that you already have COVID, so we know you're, you're sick. Um, it may not be hard for them to tr determine if they take the medication, because they don't even know if they have that or, you know, the placebo or, or whatever else you're giving them. But that when you look at the big picture of these 6,000 people, percentage-wise of the people who ended up in the hospital with severe outcomes um, is much lower than, than the regular population. Yeah, so our hope, and I think you've hit on a couple important issues there. So first of all, this is a placebo-controlled study, and that is in contrast to the other studies that are being reported out there. So, you know, IV medications, medications in critically ill patients, because a high percentage of those individuals are gonna get better on their own, regardless of any kind of therapy. So it's very important to have a placebo arm, which this study does. And second, this study will hopefully enroll over the next three to four months. We're really looking at the ability of this oral medication to prevent individuals from having to go to the hospital or needing mechanical ventilation and to help them living longer. So I think the next steps for this medication, you know, if the, the clinical trial shows a benefit, is to really um, try to, 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 uh, to implement this on a wide scale global level. And what's unique about this uh, study design, also this intervention, is that it can be implemented even in resource limited uh, settings. So it is an oral medication, and this is in contrast to things like remdesivir, uh, which are the antivirals that require IV infusion. Um, over several hours. So that is something that usually is going to require much more monitoring than a, an oral medication. What about the, the supply chain for this? Let's say your study goes through and it has, you know, amazing results where now, you know, people are saying, well, why don't we just give it to folks? You know, the minute, you know, they get their positive test, they also get this, this pill because, you know, it has a chance of lowering because certainly as we talk about going back into regular life, we mm -hmm don't, which we don't think that this, <laughs> this virus, unfortunately, is going to be gone. And so there's always this risk. If, if your study, and I don't know how quickly we could determine if it, if this medication works, I know it's already widely used. Would that be an easy rollout to say, just take this and it, there's not a huge side effect. And because it's already been used, you, you've already gone through, gone through some steps of, as opposed to the new drugs that are being considered. Yeah, so I think uh, to clarify, as you alluded to, this is not a drug that's going to prevent you from getting COVID. So this is not like a prophylactic type uh, treatment, but um, because it is an oral medication, it's readily available, it's inexpensive, and it has an excellent safety profile, that the ability to give it quickly in the setting in the future to many, many individuals is definitely possible. And, and, and we don't think, because certainly when we talk about the new drugs that are being created, they talk about how hard that that would be to to get it out is it, is this a different is it is it easier to manufacture than some of the other options they're talking about when they're talking about vaccinations or some of these other drugs that you yeah. mentioned that are IV issues absolutely so this medication is already out there it's uh, FDA approved for treatment of gout and other anti-inflammatory conditions it's already been used safely in that setting for decades so it is something that would be easily available to participants, you know, if it's shown to have a benefit. Um, Are you worried at all that like some of the other, when you mention a name of a drug, you know, I, I get nervous to even mention any of the ones that have been used in the past that people are calling their doctors and saying, just, just give me this, that of that's course. going to be an issue? Absolutely. So that brings up an important point too. Um, I don't want people to confuse this with chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. This is colchicine. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different medication. It 
hits a different mechanism. And so of course, and that's why we're doing these studies to, to see if they work. And certainly we don't want individuals to just take this medication, you know, because of, of fear of the disease. So, so I think that that's an excellent or point. Stockpile or do anything like that. I mean, I certainly people this are- This is not toilet paper, paper. right. It's not yeah. toilet paper. You know, and, and how confident are you that this has a good chance? I mean, we, we obviously, you're doing, this, the, doing the trial so that you can find out for sure. And so, we, you know, we don't have a crystal ball to know that, oh yeah, this is going to be, um, you know, and, and maybe that's part of, you know, all of us wanting some, some answer that at least will, will save, save lives. But going into this, it's like a lot of things when you're talking about, it sounds pretty good science-wise in terms of how optimistic, uh, you know, that researchers are to say, this really could have some potential. Where on the scale are you? Mm -hmm. So I want to clarify that this study is being led by um, Jean-Claude Tardy, who's a, um, a Canadian investigator from the Montreal Heart Institute. He's the same investigator that led the colchicine studies in the setting of cardiovascular disease. So I think definitely in terms of inflammation and lowering inflammation safely, that the profile of this medication is known. Um, there is some uh, premise that this may work in the setting, at least of SARS-CoV um, by uh, blocking the NLRP3 inflammasome. And so we know there's some uh, similarities between SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2. Now, that being said, can I say that this is definitely going to work in the setting of COVID-19? I cannot. And that's the purpose of this study, to really look at the efficacy in a large clinically driven outcome study that has a placebo. And that is really the gold standard to prove that a drug works. Okay. So in a timeline situation, you get the signups of, of these folks. Do you have to have everyone? I mean, are you rolling it out as people sign up and they fit the criteria? And how soon would you have any kind of definitive results that that yes, uh, this doesn't work? Yes, this does work or no, no, this we're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Right. So that is one of the purposes of today's uh, uh, meeting. You know, as yeah. such, we definitely want to get the word out there. We want interested patients uh, to contact us um, so we can complete the trial as soon as possible. Um, the hope is to enroll fully within three to four months. And of course, there is a, a monitoring committee that's independent of the people helping in the study. So this is a group of like four or five investigators that will review the data and the safety from this medication, and they'll make a decision at certain set points during the study, you know, do we have enough evidence now that this is going to work, or, you know, is, does it look like it, it may not be beneficial? So there is an independent team that will be evaluating data as it comes in at predetermined times. It seems to me, um, and, and again, I don't know how complicated it is, but I wonder because you know, right now people are doing those drive-through testing sites. Then they get the call. You know, I talked to a, a woman just yesterday who said she, six hours after she did that, she got the call that said, okay, yes, you have tested positive for COVID-19. Is there a way to integrate into that process or is there resistance to do that? Say, okay, you've tested positive for COVID-19. We also want to send you a bunch of uh, clinical trials, this one included, of yep. where you would qualify because it would seem yes. to me that that would be the, when someone's processing it. I mean, if, if I get a positive test result and you can give yeah. me something that is generally safe and it might mitigate something that I'm having so that I don't end up in the hospital. Uh, hello, I'm, you know, checking the box theoretically if, if I can. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's spot on. And that's something we're trying to get the word out there to all the testing centers in San Francisco. We have like approved flyers and handouts, but it's really just, I think, uh, you know, we, we're, we're doing the best on our end with a small crew. Yeah. And so I think if there's any way to get, the word out there. Yeah. <laughs> to get the word out to that, because I think that is, you know, or, you know, and we'll obviously post this and share it. So for those people who are going to share it too, we should go back to the criteria because it's not just, oh, you've got COVID-19. Right. You exactly. have to have exactly. some of these other things. So right. let's clarify for folks because okay. that way they, yes. you know, I think even if they hear about this and said, oh, wait, that's my father who's got diabetes he's right. over 40 he's you know he check 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 tell me the criteria again okay. so basically you have to be uh, over the age of 40 with one cardiovascular risk factor and the risk factor can be advanced age so over the age of 70 um, having high blood pressure having high cholesterol having diabetes or smoking and so also ideally Ever a smoker or currently smoking 
I, I actually, I don't know off the top so, of my head. But, yeah. but at least consider it if you have smoked in your yeah. life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. And then what would exclude you? Like so anyone, you? yeah. So younger individuals, uh, individuals who are pregnant or breastfeeding, and then uh, individuals who have been diagnosed and a lot of time has elapsed. So if you're like more than two days after your diagnosis, um, this probably is not uh, the study for you. Yeah. Okay. And so that's, that's the important part. We have to act quickly because I imagine that you sign up you and, and all these things are verified. It is very quick that you, the next day you might get in the mail. Okay. Right. Start taking these, these right. bottles and, right. and that's, that's for efficacy, right? It has to be taken before the onset right. too. I mean, we want to we want to give it right away. Exactly. The scientific storm. Explain that of uh, what we think is happening inside people's bodies within, you know. Yeah. So basically, when you uh, when the virus uh, when you become infected with the virus, uh, your body's defense system and immune system against the virus gets revved up, and because of that, um, lots of different inflammatory cytokines are produced. And those things cause uh, kind of damage to the lungs and a lot of the advanced lung disease and uh, worsening respiration that, that you read about um, in, in these stories. Okay. And so the idea is we calm down the storm before it can do the damage because once the damage is done, it is hard to get undone. And I think that's what exactly. the patients are, are, are dealing with. And exactly. Okay. Three to four months, you know, I will cross my fingers for you. We'll get the word out because certainly... Uh, you know, this is the time when we, we want all optimists in the lab. We want all of these things, you know, to work. If they could all work, that's even better. <laughs> and uh, certainly, Absolutely. you know, when it comes to science, uh, we, are, we are rooting for you 100%. <laughs> thank you. All right. Priscilla Shu, thank you so much. And it is a quick uh, online sign up. We'll make sure to post that for, for people. So it, it is, is quick, contactless, and in the mail. And, um, and hopefully it puts us all in a better place. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right.